All right, sir. Um, I do my. Oh, I left the house without my watch. Twelve fifty-seven. All right, Mr. Murdoch, um, you state your full name for me, please. Richard Alexander Murdoch. Uh -uh. And spell your last name so I get it correct. M U R D A U G H. All right. And you go by Alec? Yes, sir. And date of birth, Mr. Murdoch? May 27th. 1968 and a good phone number for you 803-942-1227 and sir what was your name yeah Danny Henderson okay all right um, as I stated, I'm David Owen and uh, Laura Rutland with Collington County, and I'm with SLED. I hate to have to do this. I but, understand. Yeah. I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. So you don't you don't have any problem yeah. with it. So um, just start the to top. Take your time. Um, like when I came back here, mm -hmm. I mean, I pulled up and I could see them, and you know, I knew something was bad. I ran out. I knew it was really bad. <laughs> my my boy over there, I could see it was. I could see his brain on his... <laughs> and I ran over to Maggie and uh, actually I think I tried to turn Paul over first um uh you know, I tried to turn him over, and uh, I don't know. I figured it out. Um, uh, his cell phone popped out of his pocket. I started to try to do something with it, thinking maybe, but then I put it back down really quickly. Um, then I went to my wife, and I, I mean, I could see. Mm -hmm. mm, Did you touch Maggie at all? I did. I touched them both. Okay. I tried to take, I mean, I tried to do it as limited as possible, mm -hmm. but I, I tried to take their pulse on both of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I called 911 um, pretty much right away, and she was very good. Um, I talked to her. Um, I told her I was going to get off the phone to call some family members. <coughs> I did that. Um, and, um... What family members did you call? Even? I called my brother Randy. And I called my brother John. And I tried to call a little boy real good friend that's right around the corner from here but i didn't get him okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> what all was around um paul when you walked up blood any any other anything else i mean there was some body mm -hmm. things yes sir i mean like any other evidence i know you said the phone fell out the pocket um but did you see anything else that didn't belong or shouldn't belong or that wasn't part of Paul? No, sir. Not, no, not. The, no, sir. How about Maggie? No, sir. You didn't see anything around them? 
what made you come out here tonight? Um, I went to my mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Um, my mom gets anxious when she does. I went to check on them and Maggie. Maggie's a dog lover. And okay. She fools with the dogs. And I knew she'd gone to the kennel. I was at the house. I left the house and went to my mom's <clears throat> for just a little while. I tried to call her when I left. <coughs> Texted her, no response. Um, when I got back to the house, the house was obviously nobody was in there. So I figured they're still up here fooling around. Paul was um, gonna be getting set up to plant. Our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died and he was refiguring to do, to plant the sunflower seeds. Okay. So. I came back up here and I drove up and saw and called. Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, mm -hmm. wonderful relationship. And yours and Paul's relationship? As good as it could be. How old was Paul? 22. Okay. You know his date of birth? I do. April 11th, 96 is his brother's. April 14th, 99 is Paul's. Yeah, about, what's Maggie's full name? Margaret Branstetter Murdoch. And her date of birth, sir? September 15, 1968. <clears throat> Have y'all been having any problems out here? Trespassers, none people that, breaking in. None that I know of. The only thing that what comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and there's been a, you know, he was charged with being uh, arrested for being the driver. There's been a lot of negative publicity about that, and there's been a lot of people online just really vile stuff, but. When Paul's out and about, I mean, people routinely, I don't think I know the full story, um, so I don't think they give it to me, but I mean, he's been punched and hit and just attacked a lot. So, you know, but I mean, nothing like this. Yeah, any, any one person in particular or group of people? I don't know. That you could think of? Not that I know, no, sir. Has he, re other than being assaulted, has he received any direct threats related to the boat accident? Oh, yes. All the time he re gets recently? Um, Yes, sir. I mean, he gets them all the time. Okay. He gets them all the time. <clears throat> what kind of, th I mean. I'm going to kick your ass, you know. I I've never been privy firsthand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Is that through social media or? No, ma'am. It's mostly like if if he goes out places is what, you know, what he goes out like somewhere. He's in college, so if he goes out, is what I understand. Mm -hmm. okay. I can find out better details from some of his younger friends on that. Who's his best friend? Uh, um. His best friend in Columbia is is um, Will's Chapman, Will Loving, um, Bobby Boyle. Bobby Boyle, Will Chapman, and Paul were getting ready to move into a house together in Columbia. You said, um, you said Will Chapman and Will Loving? Will's... Wills with an S, okay. Chapman, and Will 
with an L loving. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> um, around here, his best friends are clearly Nolan Tootin and Rogan Gibson. Tootin? Nolan Tootin? Yes, sir. And what was the other one? I'm sorry. Rogan Gibson. Have you talked with any of these guys tonight? Talked with Nolan, yes, sir. Is he out here? Yes, sir. Okay. I tried to call Rogan. Was one of the people that he's the boy that I told you lives okay. around the corner. Okay. That's very, you know, he's just a good, helpful young man. You mind if I open the door real quick? Go right ahead. Right do what you need to do. <clears throat> so, is there anybody? that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of <coughs> off the top of my head. Okay. You know? Um, I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it. But it just didn't make any sense. I just hired a guy out here mm -hmm. and he really, he wasn't cutting the mustard, but I hadn't told him this yet. Paul's been working with him a lot. He killed the sunflower seeds in our dove field just recently, which is why Paul was here doing this. He told Paul a story the other day about how when he was in high school, he got in a fight with some black guys. And the FBI undercover team observed him fighting those guys and put him on an undercover team with three Navy SEALs. And that their job was to kill radical Black Panthers. And they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. Now, I really don't think this guy, you know, mm -hmm. is probably the person, but that's just so friggin'. Yeah, that's kind of far-fetched story. It's weird, but he was off today. Okay. He took his daddy to the doctor. What's his name? C.B. Rowe. R-O-W-E? Yeah, and I sent him a message to text me earlier today about sunflowers, and he called me back when I was on the way to my mom's house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you talk to him at that time? Briefly. I was on the phone with a lawyer friend of mine named Chris Wilson from Bamberg, so I told him I'd call him back okay. tomorrow see him in the morning when you briefly talked to um mr rowe what was his demeanor or attitude or i mean it seemed normal i mean i asked him about the sunflowers and so you know i mean i'm sure he's a little bit where does he live i don't exactly know somewhere in bluff i mean in bronson okay <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Do you have his phone number? I do. You got it with your police, sir? I do. You know, but I do think him and Paul got along pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, that's just really, really weird. All right. Um, CB... Right there, in the lap. Here, I know he called me, so I'll go to that. Okay. Eight four three five four zero nine three three five. You need to get that phone on the charge, Yellick, if you can. Is that an iPhone? Yes, sir. Uh, watch your leg for a second, please. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> when, did he, you, when did he tell that story to Paul? Uh, sometime last week. Okay. Sometime last week. Um, 
my son Paul actually and I really do not think on all honesty that it's him but I know y'all got to check it out but Paul was so taken aback by it <coughs> that he sent I'll find it I got it on my phone he, he recorded him saying bits and pieces of it okay. huh. uh, but for all his weirdness I, I mean I do think they like I mean they got along okay. pretty good I guess how long have they been working here uh, I guess about um three or four pay periods, so um, eight weeks, a couple months. Okay. <clears throat> Going back to the boat incident, um, anybody on that boat really have a hard on for Paul? that you would think would come after him or know of any direct threats from people on the boat? I don't know of any direct threats between any of the people on the boat okay. specifically, but I, I do think there's been a small amount of yip yap between a couple of them, but not recently. Okay. <clears throat> Most of this was stuff from people that Paul didn't really know. Okay. It was some people that he knew distantly, but more times than not, when I learned about it, it was somebody that he didn't know. Okay. Um, it's like, for example, he went out in Charleston a couple months ago, came back, you know, he got a black eye. And, you know, he can't defend himself right now because he has these charges. So, you know, he would, Paul was a real tough man's man, mm -hmm. you know, he would just. He would defend himself, but he hadn't been. That's right, but. How was he handling that case, <coughs> moving over everybody? As far as what? How was he handling it? I've never been prouder of him than the way he has handled the pressures and the adversity in that situation. I think I've told Danny that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful kid. He can do almost anything. He gets along with almost anybody. <clears throat> do y'all store any weapons out here? Um, we don't store them, but they're, you know, they're frequently out here. Mm -hmm. I need to find out if there were any out here because I know there was a shotgun. There was a 12-gauge shotgun out here. Uh, I'll have to find out exactly when that was. I think it got put up, but I'm not positive. What did that shotgun look like? Uh, it was a camouflage. Um, I, I want to say it was a Benelli or maybe a Beretta. I can't remember which brand it is. But I don't think it was out here okay. recently. But I'm not positive. And the, the shotgun that you had when deputies pulled up, where did that come, come from? I went to the house and I got a gun, probably overreacting, but... And was that when you pulled up and saw them? Was, no, I, I mean, I came out and I mean, I called 911 first. Mm -hmm talked to them for a little while and then I told her you told her that I was that I was going to go to the house okay and that I would let authorities know when they got here that I had a gun okay <laughs> do you happen to have a list of all your guns I can make one I don't okay. have one yeah. but I can make one okay 
Well, I'm just saying, you know, so we could compare if that shotgun was out here and now it's missing. Absolutely. Um, try to figure, figure that out. I know, absolutely. And I know living out here in the country, you probably have more than one or two. We do. We probably have 20, 25 guns, yeah. Shotguns, rifles, rifles, pistols. Any rifles? Yes, sir. And what kind of rifles? All kinds. Yeah. All kinds. I mean, you name it across the board, we have them. Okay. And I mean, they're all of them we have are, you know, in a hunting room in our house. What was their schedule today? When did they get home? My son works for my brother and he was coming home to deal with the sunflowers. Um, uh, he got here he got here pretty early because he and I rode around looking at everything for a good little while, probably 45 minutes to an hour. Um, Maggie had things she did in Charleston, and um, she had a doctor's appointment in Charleston. And she got back here. It was fairly late. Was it dark yet when Paul got home? No, Paul got home early. Early, okay. So before dinner time? Before oh, yes, ma'am. Lunch time? Or... No, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> what brother, what um, brother does Paul work for? John Marvin. And what does Paul do for him? Everything. Just handyman? Yes, sir. Okay. Was it unusual for Maggie to feed the dogs this time of night or check on them? Oh, no. I mean, she played with those dogs every, all the time. And it was especially common for her to, you know, she's been gone for a while mm -hmm. to come and let especially two of them out to run. Okay, so she pretty regularly comes out here in the evenings? Very regularly. Okay. She comes out here a lot. any cameras on your property? I have deer cameras, but none, you know, around up here. Where are they at? On, on different deer stands. Okay, so deep in the woods? Well, not necessarily deep in the mm -hmm. woods. Some of them are in fields and... Okay. Um, but I don't, there's none that, you know, are near here. Okay. <laughs> Um, what doctor's appointment, what doctor did Maggie see today? Um, I forget the guy's name. Maggie's been having trouble with her, she's been having trouble with her stomach and her tooth. I'm not positive. It was sort of a routine visit and I can't remember. She told me the name of him and I can't, I want to say Gordine, Gordine, Gordine. Okay is um, who I think she saw. So was she back home around supper time? Or, um, or six o'clock, seven o'clock? I don't think she got back quite that early. I think she got back a little bit later than that. Okay. Um, what did you do today? Were you at the office or? Nope, I was home. I came home. Paul and I messed around. I, I, uh, I was up at the house. I laid down, took a nap on the couch, probably, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. I got up. I called Maggie. Didn't get an answer. And I left to go to my mom's. She had said she might ride with me, but she normally doesn't when I go over there. Um, and I think I texted her. 
and she's very good about answering the phone so that was odd or calling me back mm -hmm. so that was odd but it wasn't that big a deal now what time was that what, what time was what that you sent her a text message I checked, texted her at 9.08, going to check on M, be right back. And then I texted her at 9.47. That must be when I started to come back. I think I called her before that. But let me make sure. Uh, pretty sure that I called her 9.45. And then I tried Paul. And then, no, I think that was riding. Um, I think that might have been riding over there. Ten o three. I mean, my calls are right here. Yeah. So, um, obviously, this is when. This is when I, at Yes, sir. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you go. Anybody else want some gum? Uh, you don't have any water, do you, Danny? Sure. I'm sorry. I don't need it. If you, behind Danny's head, is a oh. case of water. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I got some right here. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. sure we're going to have much more questions i'm available at you know you let me know <clears throat> what um what's another number in case i can't get you on your cell i don't have a house phone okay um my office number i can give you my brother's cell phones all right what's randy's Okay, Randy's is 803-943-8881. And John's? John Marvin's is 843-321-5508. And you said your dad's in the hospital? Yes, sir. Uh, which, which hospital? Charleston or... Savannah, so, Candler, St. Joseph's. Is he doing okay or what's? Uh, he's having a really, really hard time. He's got a lot, 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 lot going on. Okay. <coughs> you know, he's, um, he's, he's doing okay given everything, but he's got a lot going on. Mm. About Maggie's family, where are they? Somerville. Have you been in touch with them tonight? Contacted, yes. I had my brother call Bart, um, the wife of his sister, and I mean the husband of Maggie's sister, so mm. that they could go and tell Maggie's parents. I felt like they needed to hear it in person. Mm -hmm. And they are going there and calling me. So they must not be there yet. Maggie's parents in Somerville? Yes. Okay. And she, her mom just had a knee replacement surgery and her dad really has trouble getting around nowadays. Mm -hmm.
Do you have any other children? I do. I have a 24-year-old. That's right. You said it. What's his name? Buster. Well, Richard Alexander, Jr. Okay. He goes by Buster. He goes by Buster. Is he here tonight? He's on his way. Okay. Laura, you got anything? Um, this one's hard, but when you first saw Paul, you said you tried to flip him over. Was he laying on his back or on his stomach? Just like he, he is. Just like he is, so you weren't able to move him. Okay. No, ma'am. Okay. And did he help Maggie a lot out here with the animals? He helped everybody with everything. Okay, so it was kind of routine for him to be out here as well in this, the evening? This place is his absolute passion. Okay. I tried to turn him, and then I tried, and then I checked him, and I, I mean, I, I, I think I already knew, but I checked him. <coughs> and when you pulled, first pulled into the property, did you come from this direction where all our police cars are, or which way did you come in? I went to the house. Okay. And then I came from the house. This way. Straight here, yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, where my vehicle was mm -hmm. parked is probably is, is where it was okay well no maybe not mm -hmm. exactly but it was pretty close because okay. i came back the same route that's right because you went back to get your shotgun when i came okay. back all right um I can't think of anything else right now, but, you know, we'll certainly be in touch. Um, Thank y'all for everything y'all are doing. Yes, sir. So, you yes, know, sir. just to kind of let you know what's going to go on, we're going to be out here for quite some time. Um, the coroner will take custody of Paul and Maggie. Oh, yes. Can I answer that? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, let me. I, we're finished. Let me come out. Anyway, I'll be here when he gets here. Hmm. No, don't let him come up here. <sighs> okay, yeah. I think we're about done. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So, I'm sorry. Buster, in here. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I dropped my card. Okay. Uh, we'll get you another one. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll get you one. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the coroner will come over and talk to you. Um, you know, they'll do the autopsy and everything and then go from there. Thank um, you. But we'll come to you before we leave. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Yes, <clears throat> Thank yes, you, sir. Ms. Rutland. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Here, you want this water? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Yep.